Good day. Welcome to the Project Pal. My name is Gudhildur. I'm an Icelander. I live in Iceland and this is my podcast vlog chat type of thing where I talk mainly about yarn, about knitting, crocheting, yarn, anything fiber related. Whenever I learn anything about it because fiber is interesting. I also talk quite a bit about the weather because mainly people just love talking about the weather, particularly here in the Nordic part. Yay. Eloquent. Um, currently, overcast. It's really cloudy. It's been like, like a touch of sun with rain. A little bit of rain. It's been really interesting. But we are at the very least in the positive digits. We've been in the positive digits for the past week. It's fantastic. It's May. It. <clears throat> It is spring type of spring and it is so nice. Um, but yeah, it's called the Project Pearl because I have projects and they are in pearls. <sighs> Almost finished with the cardigan, the crochet cardigan that I've been working on and off for um, <laughs> way longer than I should have. I'm not finished. I haven't woven in the ends and I really want to do, I need to do it like one pass, um, like a simple rip around the edges, but um, not this, like um, this doesn't really suit this shirt, but you know, it's so cute. It's the length is hitting right up my um like my hip bone, bone is over here so it's hitting the length that i like the sleeves are definitely the length that i like they're like these nice quarter sleeves white and nice so yeah all i need to do is weave in the ends and do one pass like that's actually in the pattern um to tidy up the edges just around here. I think the sleeves are fine. Make a, uh, make something up on the edge there just to make them a little tidier. But other than that, this one is done. So, yeah. Not much done to finish this one up. So it is ready for the summer. So that is nice. Um, as for the project pal, project pal, knit night project, the lovely, lovely sweater that I've been that almost hit my coffee. That would not have been nice, but yeah, the super nice jumper that I've been working on. Where's that? This here, Dinga, with the very, very simple pattern in the front. Um, that you start from top down. Ta -da! It is coming along really nicely. Um, yeah, I almost double what I last night. I almost double what I did last time, so it's going really, really well. Again, I'm using. Oops, it is. Now this one is a mess. Drops air. <laughs> Extremely nice yarn. Pretty certain that I'm gonna have some like leftover yarn when I'm done with this. So, which is nice because drops air is such fantastic yarn to work with. So yeah, I am. Very pleased with how much I've gotten done with this one. Hopefully not long, much longer left of it. Like I think the length I'm supposed to supposed to knit is like thirty four centimeters, and then I do like short rounds, which I've never done before, to balance out the pattern, and then I do the sleeves. I mean, is it perfect? No. Um, the increases that I've done, like, 
Um, I mean, you can see it's handmade. Like, it's not even in the slightest, but it's mine. And uh, I don't care. Generally, do not care. It's going to be my personal sweater, so... I'm um, speaking of midnight though. So, <laughs> technically speaking, I'm not on a buying ban. Technically speaking, I'm trying my dang hardest not to. <sighs> but, it is my local yarn store. They very graciously give us 20% discount when we buy yarn on midnight. And last week, last Thursday, they were celebrating their 25th year of operations. The coffee shop was 25 years old, so they were giving 25% discount. I would have been a fool not to jump on it. And again, I do still follow my rule of thumb. If I don't find a pattern, I'm not buying the yarn. So I'm making another summer dress. So not just my hobby um, crochet summer dress that I'm really want to get started start working on it, honestly. Like, since I've got this one finished, I really want to get started on the crochet dress and see how that turns out for me. But there's a yarn that I've been wanting to try out. Like, it's really nice cotton yarn. It's very, very popular. Uh, it's the Sansgan Mandarin Petite. Um, it's all over the place here in Iceland. Pretty much every single yarn store has it. It's very nice cotton. It's very popular because, you know, good yarn is inevitably popular and also the color um, I don't feel like my camera is picking it up quite a bit but it's like a very warm warm toned light pink and the pattern that I found I actually found it on my favorite store uh, not, not store my favorite pattern page because Garden Studio has so many free patterns that are just available in so many languages and I can pick them in Icelandic which I don't really have a problem with patterns in English like this one but if I can get them in my own native tongue I am going to go for it and also the fact that I managed to find really really nice summer dress um, I mean, admittedly, made from drops yarn, not sandscam. And um, the drop yarn, I cannot remember exactly which yarn it was. I think it's a cotton polyester blend. This one is 100% cotton. Um, and um, this is for like three millimeter thick needles. And the pattern, the yarn used there is like four millimeter. But I'll just need to do the gouts thing and um, test swatch type of dealio and just figure it out. The major difference is that the yarn in the pattern, I do remember that is 105 meters per skein that one. This one is 180 meters, so that's a 75 meters difference, so it's less yarn. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how it turns out. But again, like I got it on 25% discount. Plus, what I found out repeatedly is that when I do Google, like when I'm looking up the yarn that, that is available at my local coffee shop slash yarn store, very often find that, you know how often uh, like independent stores are they tend to be more expensive, which is logical because they are smaller and they have like smaller stock. They have, you know, higher risk. So why is it that I repeatedly find that my tiny little local provider of gorgeous, gorgeous yarn is repeatedly cheaper than the big chain stores? Or the official stores, like, 
why. I feel very fortunate because they their prices are logical. Um, I just find it very, very strange, to say the least, that way bigger chain stores, like chain stores, are pricier than one tiny little seller. It's just a bit odd, but you know, lucky me. That sound, kind of sounds like humble bragging. Um, I just realized that. <laughs> but again, um, even if I were to like go shop from a big chain store, I would not be getting 25% discount on top of the fact that, again, my local little yarn store is cheaper already. And then plus, the... anyway, that is my justification for why I picked up more yarn that I did not need. We know what I feel about do not need. Don't agree with it. Also, I haven't tried the Mandarin Petite and a lot of people talk about it, so... And I got a cheap... And I have a pattern. And I have a plan, so... <laughs> now, I did find it kind of funny that um, I absolutely gravitated towards this colour. And I didn't realise or remember until I got home that uh, the other dress that I'm going to make... Like, this one is knitted. This one is crocheted. Can someone tell me why I'm suddenly gravitating towards the pink tones this year? Like, I am actually gravitating towards the tones that, or you know, the colors that I haven't really been like thinking about in a way. Like, well, C says. And um, when there are like two, three, four pink like sweaters that I'm planning, plus hats. <sighs> Anywho, so I had a thought and it, it was like jumbled. So, we're gonna ignore that and um, derail ourselves because I kind of realized that I was opening my mouth and putting my foot in it. Um, which is usual, but I would rather just skip doing that. Um, but what I did also find, yet again, when I was tidying up, because that happens, um, because I was actually looking for a yarn, it's here in here somewhere, in one of my baskets, the yarn that I'm going to use for the bikini that I'm going to crochet, because, I mean, hopefully we're going to have some in the summer. It's going to be hilarious for a person who never wears a bikini to crochet herself a bikini. I'm going to do it. I just need to find out where I put the yarn. But what I did rediscover, because <laughs> I keep hiding things for myself, apparently, is this wonderful silk mohair. It's so soft. Like, silk mohair is just the best blend. And the colors in this yarn is just gorgeous. And the... Lovely little, like, um, garment that I'm going to be making is this, poof, like this sheer sleeved, like, top type of thing. Um, this is a book by Lena Holm Samsu. Samsu. Uh, pretty certain she's Norwegian. Pretty certain. I'm not completely 100% sure she's either Norwegian or Danish. I mean, it's either or. Pretty certain she's Norwegian. So, I'm gonna... Um, oh, well. I mean, the model, her name is Trina, and these are her three children, Kale, Selma, and Alfred. Really good children. So they are the models in this book, and they live in Copenhagen, which is the capital of Denmark. Still pretty certain that she's Norwegian. I don't know why. I don't know why. Like... I don't 
know why. I'm, but no. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> she might be. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with this, but I think it's mainly because a lot of the books that um, the other, a lot of the other ladies in, um, who attend nice, they use a lot of books that are in Norwegian. So I think that's where my stubbornness with Lena Holmes Amsler is coming from. I'm pretty sure that she's Danish. But since there are so many people in the Nith group that um, use Norwegian books and Norwegian pens and Norwegian like magazines, I just decided that she must be Norwegian as well, but... Ugh. Yeah, very very nice pants. I still haven't used one. <laughs> still haven't made any by her, but I think I have like two or three of her books. <laughs> I need to start working. Like this really really simple um, cardigan. Um, there's no buttons, and it's just. Yeah, see, like this is made from um, mohair. It's really, really nice. Anyway, I am going to be making that lovely. Um, so hopefully I will be able to make this like... Um, open pattern because it looks I mean to have the um I had the word a moment ago increases to have the increases as an open pattern right up my alley because um me and increases um do tend to just accidentally become an open pattern when they're not supposed to um, and also find out if I can make it out of this silk mohair because I'm pretty certain that they use another grade of mohair but I have this yarn and I want to use it and I think it's gonna look like absolutely gorgeous in that pattern um, might actually be the next pattern that I pick up for knit nights I really need to get start finished on this one that I'm making out of the drops air so I can get fin start on this one Plus there's another, <laughs> there's another sweater that I want to try and get finished this summer. That's also mohair. Um, and I really want to get it done because A, I have the pattern, I have the yarn, I want to wear it. Um, but also like mohair is going to be, I mean the ones that have been worked with it. Um, and have garments made out of mohair they all talk about how nice and warm and light it is so like when you have a summer like we have here in Iceland when it can be hot and cold this with like two minutes difference um, having a garment that can breathe and retain heat and still like cool you down sufficiently I mean there Having a garment like that is just worth its multiple multiplied weight in gold, honestly. And um, I don't really have an excuse. Like this is gonna look so nice in that top. So jumper, jumper, pants, bikini, two dresses. <laughs> oh, and that also that open jumper that I really want to make. Um, another of the um, hobby patterns. Um, yeah, so pattern from hobby, um, pattern from Stroff and um, Icelandic pattern, um, pattern from a book and a pattern from Garden Studio. So I'm all over the place when it comes to patterns. Oh yeah. 
I think I've pretty much jabbered my brain cell. Actually, mm -hmm, I want to tell you, I took a walk yesterday, which because I'm a real lazy, so I tend not to take too many walks when I set my day off because <laughs> I'm lazy. But it, the weather yesterday was just so fantastic, and I really, really, really want to get out and move. And there were like a couple of drops of rain, but otherwise it was just so nice and just reasonably warm. Considering that it's beginning of May and I could actually go outside wearing leggings. And I mean, I warm coat over, but still leggings in May. Um, there's a small town that's, I say town, it's more like a hamlet is a small collection of like a couple of houses basically um i think there's like maybe 10 people who live there um it's a fjord called muifjord and um over the winter time they do not have a an overland access to you know rest of the country their only access is a small boat that goes twice a week. So um, my day job is at the local grocery store. So twice a week all over the winter, I prepare and um, pack up their food, whatever they are ordering. And that's from September generally until the end of May. However, unusually, a week ago they managed to open up the land access and at the very very end of April which I cannot remember ever happening um, last year we were really really happy about the fact that they managed to open up in the around middle of May and that was considering and is usually pretty early so like I remember years when they couldn't open up the um, the moors, the um, land access until like June, um, because of snow. So the fact that we're like this early in opening up, uh, so I'm also watching like the mountains here opposite. Like the moss is turning green. It's May. It's the beginning of May. It's the first week of May. I kind of feel like we're, we are a little bit ahead of schedule, like honestly. Um, it's really nice. This is nice. I really hope that we get a proper summer this summer because I'm all for it. Like how, the, how this winter decided to end is like, um, I would be happy to not see too much snow until like <laughs> honestly December would be fine. <laughs> I usually don't mind snow but um, let's just say that the quota has been filled for a good long while. <laughs> but yeah so I am gonna, I need, gonna need to do the annoying part with this one of weave in the ends. I hate weaving in the ends, but that's just something that is something that needs to be done. I'm sorry, I gasped because I just remembered something that um, one of the ladies told us, told us um, uh, one at night, I think it was like two weeks ago. <coughs> so you know that I absolutely detest weaving in the ends, but I do because um, it's, you know, we do not want our finished products to unravel during like washing and um, that would be horrible to like put your um, work into the washing machine and then just pick up the yarn. So we weave in the ends and we do it properly and um, I mean most of us do. The horror story that she shared with us was that um, she knows someone who has been knitting for like 40 years, knitting and possibly crocheting, I don't know, I don't know this person, um, 
this person does not weave in the end. She ties a knot and she, then she just cuts it. <laughs> I mean, I detest weaving in the ends, but that... That sounds insane. And this person has apparently been doing it for like forever. I cannot. I, I cannot. I would rather just put something on and find a needle and do the boring stuff and be reasonably sure that um, my hard, my hours and hours of work isn't gonna unravel when I wash it. But dear lord, knowing that there are people out there who do not weave in the ends and just stop, cut it. My mother and my, what would you call it, the, um, we had a very nice teacher when I was a kid who taught, taught us, um, you know, knitting and crocheting and sewing and, um, you know, both embroidery and making clothes. We learned all that and um, both my mother and that dear woman, they would be, they would need a light down if I told them about that. I'm still shocked, but anyway, um, so I promise I will not do that because just the thought of it makes me kind of anxious. I mean, knowing that I'm still using that um, lovely, lovely hat that I, or beanie hat that I made out of the drops and this, the Ariel pattern. Um, I still haven't even in the ends on that one. And I still feel bad about it every single day that I pop it on, but um, <laughs> mm, I really need to weave in the ends because just thinking about that lady not having woven in the ends of any of the lupa fish or the um, jumpers or anything that she's made throughout the years and just thinking is horrifying, is terrifying. I don't know how she manages to sew. <laughs> But yeah, so my fun project is to finish this one, so it's 100% finished and I can actually start wearing it with like dresses and jeans and t-shirts and not this shirt because that was not a nice looking combo. And then the dresses, the crochet and the knitter version, I guess start on the poof at the top because it's gonna be so cute, it's gonna be really cute. Mm, okay, finish this one because I think it's gonna be so nice this, this summer. Um, at least over bikini. I like. I mean, we're gonna need to see how the summer turns out, but it's probably gonna be better to have like nice, light, um, warm clothing close by this summer. Like, I live this close to the Arctic Circle. I do not trust. <laughs> But yeah, that is definitely enough for me this weekend. Hopefully you had fun with me. And um, I will hopefully see you again next weekend. Ah. So until then, take care. Okay. And I really hope that the day is as good to you as it can possibly be. And hopefully better. And I will see you later. Okay. Take care. Bless, bless.